Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 49. Dear Lord and Father of us all, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind. In purer lives thy service find. In deeper reverence praise. Hymn number 49. The scriptural will be given by Karen from California. Deuteronomy. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord.
We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us, not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 339. There are none friendless, none afraid, the saving truth who know, their shining path leads from the shade, and up to light they go. Hymn number 339.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, where we do an in-depth analysis of this week's lesson and talk about how to make Christian science more practical in our lives, because it is truly, totally practical. We have a Sunday school for children that meets at 11 a.m., and that Sunday school has its own teleconference number so that uh, any child anywhere in the world can actually attend our Sunday school. In fact, many of our Sunday school students do attend by telephone uh, through that teleconference number. So if you don't live in the area and have a child of Sunday school age, uh, please call us. We'll be happy to give you the number and uh, would love to welcome your, son, your child to our Sunday school. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives literally saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services, we have a nursery for infants and toddlers, so you can bring them along too. We have many websites, uh, most of which are in languages other than English. And many people have found our church through our websites, and we're very grateful for that. And all of our websites contain the very finest Christian science, books, articles, music, which can be studied, listened to, sung to, if you want. But many people around the world are able to find the truth of Christian science, even in their own language. So we are very grateful to those of you who translate articles and books for us, for the website, uh, doing a great work for the world. Uh, and there's a great article that's featured on our English website that I'd like to point out. Uh, it's actually an excerpt from an article entitled, The Man of Integrity, written by Mary Baker Eddy, featured on our English website. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony of healing from miscellaneous writings, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Shahidat from Maryland. On page 442, until about one year ago, I had no thought of investigating Christian science. Previous to that time, it had been presented to me in such a way that I condemned it as unreasonable and absurd. At that time, it was presented to me in a more reasonable light. I determined to divest myself of prejudice as far as possible and investigate it, thinking that if there was anything in it, it was for me as well as others, that I surely needed it. And, I, if, I, and if I found no good in it, I could then with some short reason condemn it. I had been reading science and health about two weeks when one morning I wanted my cane. It had been misplaced. And while looking for it, the thought came to me, if all is mine, I need no cane. I went out without it, having not used at all since, and do not need it as a support. But for a time, I did miss it from my hand. I had used it for years as a support to my very lame back. I before went much stooped because it pained me to straighten up. But from the time I laid my cane aside, I straightened up free from pain. Occasionally, I've had a slight pain in my back, but it is nothing compared with what it had been. In a short time after laying aside my cane, my pipe and tobacco went out into the street and have not returned. I had smoked for 65 years and chewed for 50. I have no desire for either of them, in fact, the smoke is offensive to me. 
Many times before I had tried to quit, but the desire for it was so strong that I would go back to it. And when I tried to taper off, I would make the taper end the longest. Many other physical claims have disappeared, and it is a common thing for acquaintances to say when they see me. You look so much better than I have seen you for years. What have you been doing? My reply is, I not only look better, but I feel better, and I am better, and Christian science has done it. With all this, I seem to have very little spiritual understanding of the truth. I'm endeavoring to get more, but it seems slow. If there's a shorter road to it than I have found, I should like to be directed to it. From JSM Joplin, Missouri. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 20 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, man. The golden text is from Psalms. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. The responsive reading is from Matthew. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom, if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, Know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do to ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Craig will now read. The Bible, Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Psalms. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, and the stars which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Blessed is every one that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be 
and it shall be well with thee. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. First Timothy, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. John, Jesus saith, Your joy no man take it from you, for the Father himself loveth you. Because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Acts. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul, Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priests of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea, and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. First Peter, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rending evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. 
Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Romans. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. James. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Amanda from Missouri will now read. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Man is the expression of God's being. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence, truth in truthfulness, God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Man, made in his likeness, possesses and reflects God's dominion over all the earth. Man and woman, as coexistent and eternal with God, forever reflect in glorified quality the infinite Father, Mother, God. Man is not matter. He is not made up of brain, blood, bones, and other material elements. The scriptures inform us that man is made in the image and likeness of God. Matter is not that likeness. The likeness of spirit cannot be so unlike spirit. Man is spiritual and perfect. And because he is spiritual and perfect, he must be so understood in Christian science. Matter cannot change the eternal fact that man exists because God exists. Jesus never taught that drugs, food, air, and exercise could make a man healthy or that they could destroy human life nor did he illustrate these errors by his practice. He referred man's harmony to mind, not to matter, and never tried to make of none effect the sentence of God, which sealed God's condemnation of sin, sickness, and death. It is ignorance and false belief, based on a material sense of things, which hides spiritual beauty and goodness. Understanding this, Paul said, Neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. This is the doctrine of Christian science, that divine love cannot be deprived of its manifestation or object that joy cannot be turned into sorrow, for sorrow is not the master of joy, that good can never produce evil, that matter can never produce mind, nor life result in death. The perfect man, governed by God, his perfect principle, is sinless and eternal. Harmony is produced by its principle, is controlled by it, and abides with it. Divine principle is the life of man. Man's happiness is not, therefore, at the disposal of physical sense. Truth is not contaminated by error. 
Harmony in man is as beautiful as in music, and discord is unnatural, unreal. Happiness is spiritual, born of truth and love. It is unselfish, therefore it cannot exist alone, but requires all mankind to share it. Christian science commands man to master the propensities, to hold hatred in abeyance with kindness, to conquer lust with chastity, revenge with charity, and to overcome deceit with honesty. Choke these errors in their early stages if you would not cherish an army of conspirators against health, happiness, and success. The embellishments of the person are poor substitutes for the charms of being, shining resplendent and eternal over age and decay. The recipe for beauty is to have less illusion and more soul. To retreat from the belief of pain or pleasure in the body into the unchanging calm and glorious freedom of spiritual harmony. Love never loses sight of loveliness. Its halo rests upon its object. One marvels that a friend can ever seem less than beautiful. Men and women of riper years and larger lessons ought to ripen into health and immortality instead of lapsing into darkness or gloom. Immortal mind feeds the body with supernal freshness and fairness, supplying it with beautiful images of thought and destroying the woes of sense, which each day brings to a nearer tomb. If we were to derive all our conceptions of man from what is seen between the cradle and the grave, happiness and goodness would have no abiding place in man, and the worms would rob him of the flesh. But Paul writes, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Soul has infinite resources with which to bless mankind, and happiness would be more readily attained and would be more secure in our keeping if sought in soul. Higher enjoyments alone can satisfy the cravings of immortal man. We cannot circumscribe happiness within the limits of personal sense. The senses confer no real enjoyment. The good in human affections must have ascendancy over the evil, and the spiritual over the animal, or happiness will never be won. The attainment of this celestial condition would improve our progeny, diminish crime, and give higher aims to ambition. Every valley of sin must be exalted, and every mountain of selfishness be brought low, that the highway of our God may be prepared in science. A knowledge of the science of being develops the latent abilities and possibilities of man. It extends the atmosphere of thought, giving mortals access to broader and higher realms. It raises the thinker into his native air of insight and perspicacity. The great spiritual fact must be brought out that man is, not shall be, perfect and immortal. We must hold forever the consciousness of existence, and sooner or later, through Christ and Christian science, we must master sin and death. The evidence of man's immortality will become more apparent as material beliefs are given up, and the immortal facts of being are admitted. The sinless joy the perfect harmony and immortality of life, possessing unlimited divine beauty and goodness without a single bodily pleasure or pain, 
constitutes the only veritable, indestructible man whose being is spiritual. This state of existence is scientific and intact, a perfection discernible only by those who have the final understanding of Christ in divine science. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 160. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. It matters not what be thy lot, so love doth guide. For storm or shine, pure peace is thine, whate'er betide. Hymn number 160.
Let's now sing hymn number 324. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Hymn number 324. the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passage from 1 John, third chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. James, let patience have her perfect work, 
that ye, you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Amen.